Welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence, Ask the Experts, a live bi-weekly show to help you know what to do and what's new in digital marketing for 2021 and beyond. Ask questions, suggest topics, and grow faster with actionable insights and proven strategies from the world's leading experts. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence, Ask the Experts. I'm Marissa Morgan, your show host and also business development manager at Engage. On behalf of myself and the entire team at Engage, I'm so excited to welcome you to today's show. Today's topic is incredible. So if you are tuning in right now, you are in for a treat. We are going to be talking about why video video, live streaming, video communications, video content is a must-have for all aspects of business and business growth in 2021 and beyond. And our award-winning speaker and best-selling author is going to be sharing with us how we can use this invaluable tool to really outshine your competitors. So stick around. We have an amazing talk planned for you today. And now is the time. If you think that today's topic is a topic that is absolutely a must-see for your colleagues or friends in the business, now's a perfect time to share this link, this show link, and invite them in to today's interactive talk. We always welcome questions and comments, and I know today's guest expert has a lot to say and a lot of information to share, and I don't want you or your colleagues to miss it. So share the link right now, invite your friends and colleagues to join us in today's interactive talk. And also, don't forget that after my talk with today's special guest, I'll be sharing our Engage Digital Marketing News of the Week as well. And today's topic for that really ties in with our talk. So I may keep our special guest around for a little question and answer on today's Digital Marketing News of the Week as well. Now, before we get started, I want to mention that all of this valuable information and today's show is brought to you by Engage. If you're not familiar with Engage, Engage is a platform that gives you 25 plus free forever sales and marketing tools to not only help you grow and scale your business, but also help you provide the best customer experience and optimize customer experience for your customers. When you visit Engage.com, you will find tools to help you optimize that customer experience. And you can do that two ways. You can help provide convenience for your customers. Because as we all know, happy customers buy more, they convert faster, they return less, and they, ret and they remain loyal. So you can provide convenience for your customers by making it convenient for them to communicate with you. And you can do that with the tools at Engage.com by engaging with customers where they are. Engage with them when they're visiting your website. Have a live chat box there. Or engage with them through mobile apps and their mobile devices. The tools at Engage will help you do that. You can also use the tools at Engage.com to build trust. You can do that by personalizing engagement and product recommendations. And of course, at Engage, you can find the tools that are free forever to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put on the screen the Engage.com website so you can screenshot that and be sure to visit it after today's show. Okay, without further ado, it is time for me to welcome our very special guest. She is joining us today live from Houston, Texas. Welcome to the show, Miss Rachel Wilson Thibodeau. If you don't know Rachel, you need to. Rachel is an award winning speaker, an inbound marketing and brand strategist, and to top it off, she's a podcast host and Amazon best selling author. Bam. That's quite the introduction. Her <laughs> second book, Brand Sell Profit, Slay Your Brand, Sell Like a Champ and Profit Like a Boss, has been a game changer for many entrepreneurs and marketers. She's waving it around and other brand builders. 
She is the founder of Swag Strategy Solutions, where swag is not just a cool name, although we have to admit swag is pretty cool. It's also an acronym, and I think this is wonderful. It stands for Strategic Women Achieve Growth. Bam, love that. Impact-driven women business owners, particularly those with backgrounds in, cor in corporate and education, along with service providers and experts, turn to Rachel and her company when they need to clearly define their brand, strategically position their offers, and messaging for converting customers. One of her superpowers, and I should say one of many, is creating and helping monetize amazing value propositions that don't sound like those coming from everyone else, making it special and true to you and your brand. And just so you know, Rachel is allergic to average and gets mad at mediocrity. So to end my introduction for Rachel, a few other little tidbits. She loves God, her husband, a good book. I'm with you there, Rachel. Business and especially pasta and chocolate, and sometimes chocolate and pasta take priority. But Rachel says, do not judge her because she is an expert at two things that many people struggle with, and that is eating pasta, presumably without spilling it on your white top, right? And wearing high heels and rocking them. These are two skill sets she believes are very undervalued. Rachel is an all-around breakthrough, and she believes in helping her clients break through to more clarity, more visibility, and ultimately what everyone wants, more profitability. And she is here today to teach us and help us understand why video is a must-have for all aspects of business growth this year and in the years to come. And I'm so excited to hear what she has to say. Rachel, I don't think you can be mad at that introduction because you've earned every word <laughs> I just said. Welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence and thank you for being today's expert. Thank you, Marissa. No, I'm not mad at that <laughs> intro at all. You've done a lot. We're so excited to have you. And I want to start off today's show by just asking you, Rachel, if you could share a little bit more with us about the path that has led you to become such an incredible entrepreneur and also to become the founder of Swag Strategy Solutions. Tell us a little bit about the path that, that took you there. Wow. Well, I spent over 16 years in corporate America, and I'd like to think I don't look like I spent that long in corporate America, but I did. And I had done some entrepreneurial things kind of throughout my career. I did some consulting. I did some speaking. I did some real estate investing. So there was always kind of this entrepreneur pool. But frankly, for a long time, I figured I would kind of climb that corporate ladder and retire from a job. I mean, I, I enjoyed the, the jobs I had while in corporate America for the most part, I really enjoyed. And so, and I certainly enjoyed my regular paycheck and my, not my nice benefits. And so that's what I saw for myself at first, but the last two or three years, I was on my last job, things really started to shift it. Things shifted at that job and in that company and some of the support that I felt that I really had in that role, I no longer had. There were changes in, uh, you know, staffing and what have you. You, you, you all know these things happen. And I felt that pull more and more. And so, and my job became more demanding as well. And during that time I got married, I got married back in 2012. I left my job in 2013. And the last year or so, it, it was really kind of, it, it was difficult, it, it was challenging. And so some things happened uh, in particular the last six months. And I always tell people I was not fired from my job, but I was put in a position where I felt I really didn't have much of a choice. And so I left, I quit and I didn't have a concrete plan. I mean, the plan was starting <laughs> to form and I'm a spiritual person. And so I had been really talking to God about this and he hadn't initially been saying <laughs> a lot back. But when I made that decision, I felt really clear in making that decision. 
And so, yeah, I left my job in August of 2013. It's a little scary that it, it's coming up on eight years. Um, and I know I wanted to kind of make a shift because I spent most of my career in financial services and in sales roles, um, relationship management. And I, although it was in financial services, I know I wanted to shift more to brand strategy and marketing because that was really my first or those were my first loves. I, I started out as a marketing major and then added finance as a double major. So the first love was really, really marketing. And so I, I know I wanted to, to kind of pivot into that. And so I, I did, and it was, it was scary. It's been an adventure, uh, but one that, that I wouldn't change at least not too much. <laughs> well, I think the timing to have you on as a guest is, is incredible because things did shift in 2020 and they're still shifting in 2021 as digital marketing becomes more and more the expectation and more and more the norm, especially as we're all connecting yeah. through things like Zoom and video. And to kick off our talk today about the power of video and why it's such an invaluable tool, Rachel, we put together some statistics. Now check these out. I'll read okay. them through for those of you who may be listening, but if you're watching this webinar, read through with the, read through these with me because they're incredible. 80% of content consumed on the internet is video. LinkedIn reports that live streaming on LinkedIn Live has grown in popularity by 158% from the first to the third quarter of 2020, 158% in just nine months. That is incredible. And live videos on LinkedIn average seven times more reactions and 24 times more comments. Hey, speaking of comments, if you're watching this show with us today live, you have a question or a comment for Rachel, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Rachel, when I read those statistics out loud, what's the first thing that comes to mind in terms of the way video is really changing and how important it is? Yeah, I'm 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 chomping at the the bit here, Marissa. That first stat really jumps out at me because I remember seeing that in like 2017, 2018, the projection was being made that by 2020, 80% of content, online content would be video. Actually, I remember seeing that as far back as probably 2016. And I remember thinking, wow, I mean, that's a big number. And it happened. I mean, it, it, it has pretty much happened. And so it just goes to show you the power of video and how much it has grown. Absolutely. And one thing we're going to talk about today is video is not just recording a video and popping it up as content. Video really has a lot of different uses in your marketing strategy and as you brand yourself. And I don't want to give away everything you want to share with us, Rachel, but I think it would be wise for us to read through this together because maybe someone just tuned into our live stream and they're like, oh yeah, I do, I do videos, right? I pop up a video once a week or I do Zooms or what have you. But the reach and use and the ways that we can use video if you put it in a list like we did, far exceeds even what I've realized. So let's look at this together. And I'll read it for those of you who are listening audibly. So video uses in digital marketing, messaging, promotion on social media by, by way of reels, stories, and shorts, business explainer, meaning business, you know, videos where you're explaining who you are and what you do, demos, product intros, how-to videos, training videos, and then as you and I are doing right now, live streaming shows and live streaming events. And these I think are maybe even just a few. Rachel, you probably can come up with more, but speaking of live streaming, I know that's a hot topic and a hot button for you. So why don't we start our talk just with you sharing a little bit about the power of live streaming. What do you think about live streaming? How important is that in a business model and your you know, strategic marketing plan? Yeah, li live streaming is big because I really think in video in general, but live streaming in particular is really the next best thing 
to being in person with someone. It gives someone the opportunity to really get to know you or get a feel for you. Maybe not to not to know everything about you, but they get a feel for you, especially if you're a thought leader and or you're looking to establish yourself as a thought leader, an expert. If you are a business, a brand, it, it gives your audience and, and hopefully your target audience the chance to really get to know more about your products, your services, your brand, the message. And so it's it's really powerful because it allows you to really connect with your audience in a way that is not really there with email, with text. With, and, and although you can be creative with those strategies, it, it's just not the same as video. And live streaming in particular is great because what we're seeing more and more, for one, the consumer is becoming smarter, has become smarter. The con consumer also is probably a bit nosier <laughs> than uh -huh. five, 10 years ago. We want to know about the, the people we look up to, influencers, brands, the, the companies that, that we love. We want to see the, the behind the scenes. We, we want to know what's, what's really going on, even sometimes beyond the business aspect or beyond whatever that product and service is. And so live streaming uh, definitely offers a chance to do that. I mean, for you to be kind of in real time with your, your audience. I agree or potential with you. Buyers. <laughs> yeah. And I, I agree with you. And I like that you brought up that customers want to know more now than they ever did before. Yeah. We've brought up um, in the past during prior shows, the idea that when a CEO of a company is visible and they're on social media and they are in the digital space, that creates mm -hmm. that essence of trust for customers because they feel like the CEO is involved, transparent, a part of this growth that we're all going through. Um, so I think along that same principle and that idea that you just mentioned, now that customers have more, more ways to access information, more outlets, they have the internet, they have social media, they can read reviews, right? The power of reviews is incredible. Mm -hmm. It makes sense that customers want to know more about the businesses they're buying from. And when you do something like host a live stream, whether it's live streaming, maybe from an event that is actually happening or doing a live stream of a product unboxing, when a customer has the chance to see maybe how an employee speaks or acts or what a CEO has to say in their own words or how they answer questions, all those things, those human things certainly have the chance to influence a customer and, and truly they are powerful. We all want that human connection. Yeah. Even though we also are like, ah, oh, text me, don't call me, you know? <laughs> so let me ask you about live streaming. Oh, is that your pup trying to join in today's live stream? <laughs> Somewhat, but I, I think Feel she's free okay. Feel to introduce if, 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 if the time is right. I'm not mad. I love dogs. I, okay, I'll keep that in mind. If it's a little one and he hops on your lap, it's okay. He can be yeah. our first engaged pooch uh, <laughs> guest expert. Let me ask you, when it comes to live streaming, because we're, we're right now, you know, living that world. We're live streaming to, to uh, LinkedIn Live. Do you have any tips? Because the one thing I think is incredibly important is being consistent. So what well, yeah. do you think makes a live stream successful in terms of, I don't know, consistency or topics Ooh. or, you know? Well, consistency certainly helps. And it's something that a lot of people struggle with, although there, there are ways certainly to overcome that. I mean, it, it, it really, it, at the end of the day, is simple. I mean, you really just have to decide how important this is to you and that you're going to show up. And if that's once a week, if that works for you, if you can commit to that, then you do it once a week. If it's two or three times a week and that works for you, then you do it. If it's once every other other week, it, it just depends on what works for you, what works for your, your audience. Um, but I, I would also say really positioning 
yourself and being clear about your position and pos positioning your, your brand, uh, what it is you do, because that's what people most care about. It, it's interesting because some of my clients, and I, I hear this all, I mean, from clients, from, from uh, friends and, and people part of my network, their concerns about being on video and going live and fear and and often they're kind of trivial things now i know sometimes we, we don't think they're trivial but but really in the grand scheme of things they're trivial like i just don't look good on video my hair my makeup i i don't like the sound of my voice believe it or not I'm not a big fan of the sound of my voice either, <laughs> but I have gotten used to it and just accept it. I don't really like the sound of my voice, although I've got compliments about my voice. I've gotten compliments about me speaking, but I don't really like the sound of my voice. So that's not a great excuse because again, it's not about you. All of those things I just mentioned, it's more about me. And you have to realize this is more about your audience. And so once you realize that, once you also realize it's not going to be perfect. I know, I know you want it to be perfect. And, and especially some of my ladies out there. And yes, I'm going to say it because I work mostly with women. We tend to have more of a, a, a an issue, a thing with that than men. Not saying that it doesn't affect men at all, but we are more concerned about this perfection thing. It's not going to be perfect. But that is OK, because your audience, I know this may be a newsflash, your audience is not perfect. And a number of them actually don't want to see perfect. They want to see real. They want to see some bloopers. They want to know that you're a real person and that that applies if you're a CEO, if you're a president, if whatever title you have, they want to connect with you. And so often you have to kind of shift your mindset before going live or, or before adopting a live stream strategy, because yes, you want to show up in the best way you can. You, you want to connect well with your audience, but that doesn't always require a Hollywood production. It requires you to show up for you to care, for you to be committed and for you to be more concerned about impact. I think that that is a valid point because when we think about the videos that have gone viral in our lifetime yes. so far, <laughs> usually yeah. it is a blooper. Usually it is something that the world can relate to or a beautiful mm -hmm. story and it's shot on a grainy camera of somebody helping a homeless person, right? Exactly. You, know, you don't have the lights and the action in the Hollywood behind some of the videos that have gone viral. And I think- you brought up a great point about being consistent. Be consistent if you're going to do a live stream, but consider what is going to work for you. Is it going to be once a week? We'll stick with it. If you can't do once a week and it's going to be the last Saturday of every month, stick with it. It's almost right. like I know you have a podcast, you know, you can't start doing a podcast every Monday and Friday and, you know, do that for three months straight and start to get a following and then fall off and say, oh, mm -hmm. I'm just not going to do it for three weeks because <laughs> you're going to go like 10 steps backwards. So being consistent is key. Yeah. I do think, though, and maybe this is a good time for me to talk about some of the tools that you can use for a live stream. Two things. I do think if you can have proper equipment, it can help the production value, right? So like Yeah, the absolutely. Light, a ring light, a microphone that you can trust and that you know works well, a good camera. Those are probably the three things you're going to want for a live stream. And then also deciding on a platform or software. We use StreamYard. So check that out if you're looking for, you know, a platform to use for your live stream. And then also I'm thinking about this, Rachel, fun fact, and it will bring it up a little later with our Engage Digital News of the Week. But Engage Live just launched a few weeks ago, and that is a division of our company that actually helps people produce live streams for them. Ooh. So now if someone is nervous to do it or doesn't know how, or maybe they don't want to host it and they want to be interviewed by a host, now they have no excuse because Engage Live can actually help them in the process 
of creating their live stream. Yeah, I was just thinking, no excuse. <laughs> the, no the support excuse is out no. there. I didn't like my voice and I still don't. And I get compliments on it too. So we all need to get over ourselves. And like you said, Rachel, it's yes. not about us. It's about what you're giving to your audience and how you can help them. When they see that you can help them, then they're going to become a client or a lead or a customer. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk video in one-to-one -one communication because I know that's something that you're a strong advocate for. How do you use video in your one-on-one -on -one communications and what tips can you give our audience today for that? Oh, yes. I, I am a big fan of using video one-on-one. -on -one. And for a number of people, that's something new because often when you hear about video, it's using videos on social media, it's using videos in ads. And of course, that's that's going to a number of people. That's kind of the one-to-many model, but it, it can absolutely work in a one-on-one -on -one model and a couple of ways I use video in that way. I use videos in DMs, in direct messages, and I am typically not the annoying kind of pushy person who's uh, sending out a lot of cold DMs and with the long self, that, that's kind of a whole nother conversation. There, there is a, a way to send effective DMs. I tend to use videos as part of follow-up strategies after I've met someone initially and I'm following mm -hmm. up with them, even if we haven't met, but there's been some kind of connection, perhaps my followers on Instagram or my connections here on LinkedIn, I, I'm reaching out to them. And it's that first outreach is not a sales pitch. It, it shouldn't be a sales pitch. I may make a video where I am just kind of introducing myself. I'll say something funny. I like to think I'm a funny person. I crack my own self up. And so I will say something that I think will put a, a smile on their face. Uh, and I'll give you an example, Ashley, Marissa, I uh, reached out to a guy that's, it's been two or three months. I mean, it was earlier this year, uh, also in Minnesota. And I kind of made the joke, you know, about how cold it was that if I lived in Minnesota, I would just not go out for probably five to six months of the year. Now, maybe if I was born there, it would be different. But my native Texan self, I, I can't always even get my mind around the cold <laughs> in Minnesota. And so I, I kind of made a joke about that. And, you know, he, he, when he messaged me back, he was like, you know, you're right. And I'm thinking I need to, be, I need to get to Texas <laughs> soon. And so there was just this engagement that was just kind of light and getting, you know, getting to know one another before it moved into business. And so, and, and he also appreciated the video because again, you're even on LinkedIn, you know, you're seeing someone's picture, but that's different from you actually in, in experiencing them in a video. And let's be honest, some, some profile pictures are not current. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's that. Uh, so that's one way I use it. I also use video to get speaking gigs. And I got a paid speaking gig a few years ago from an from including an including a video in an email. And this was after several months of going back and forth with a decision maker. I did not have his phone number. This was a referral. All I had was his email address. And so we started out emailing. He expressed interest, but it was one of those things as as many uh, people experience many marketers, business owners, those in sales, you know, you're kind of going back and forth. The, the, the prospect is, is, um, expressing interest, but not moving forward or not moving forward enough. And I, I thought I was like, you know what, I'm just going to make a video because I don't know for sure if this guy has really seen me speak, although I, you know, I had referenced some videos and he could find some, but I had, I don't think I'd ever, I mean, I can't remember for sure. I may have sent him a link or something, but I still wasn't sure that he had looked at. But he even opened it. Right, right. Especially today when people are bombarded with emails and messages, we send it out with the grace that someone's going to open it or read it. But 
yeah. it could end up in their spam folder. So, okay. I want, okay. So what happened next? Yeah. So I decided to send him a video, not a very long video. That's important as well. You, you don't, especially with someone you still are, are developing a relationship with. So the video was maybe a couple of minutes and I, you know, I just, I said, hello. I said, I, I, I know we've been kind of going back and forth. I'd really like to make this happen. You know, he had, had told me a couple of events that he had in mind for me to speak at. This was actually at a, a college in the Houston area. And, you know, and I just, I just kind of talked about that. And I, I did make, you know, some kind of joke about us, us both being really busy, but, you know, let's, what is it going to take? You know, and I, I can be kind of animated <laughs> at times. I sent that video. I sent that email with that video and I got a response in 24 hours. And he said, Rachel, I love the video. Let's meet again. Marissa, this is after about seven or eight months. We're talking the wow. better part of the year of going back and forth. And we had a meeting. And of course, this was, you know, pre-COVID. We had a actual in-person meeting shortly after that. And I, I got a paid speaking gig and actually it was a series of events that I spoke at. Wonderful. So right away, you know, even in this short, you know, so far we've been talking about video for 20 minutes, some of the takeaways I'm getting, and I want to repeat these for those of you just tuning into our live stream show this morning Rachel is all about consistency, first of all. So if you're going to do something like a live stream, be consistent with it, right? If you're going to commit to once a week, do it once a week. Be consistent. Consistency is key because it takes time for momentum to grow. So that's the first takeaway. Now, second is the idea of using video for one-on-one -on -one communications. And I think if I remember correctly, you said, Rachel, you know, don't make that first connection be about selling yourself. Don't make it be, um, mm -hmm. you know, some long DM about what product you have or, or what it is you want that person to do or buy or, you know, hire you for. Work on just mm -hmm. the initial connections in general. Create likability. And I think this is common sense, but it's good to talk about. Create likability. Create a common interest or a common bond. And then once you have that connection established to some degree, it doesn't have to be intense, but to even to some degree, following up with a video message, either follow up wise, meaning, you know, I'll be sending you a video message today, Rachel, after our show, um, <laughs> or a video message to further that introduction. Those are great yep. ways to keep the ball rolling in terms of strengthening that that connection and moving the needle absolutely then, that example you shared about how essentially a video message just a few minutes long helped you essentially move the needle from stalled seven months prior to booked and paid for several speaking gigs is you know the proof in the pudding right there it's awesome it is yeah awesome. yeah all right well our last discussion topic here or um point that we'd like to talk about during today's show is why planning your content, including videos, can make a big difference to your brand and marketing efforts. So let's see, I want to put this back up on the screen and go through it again. So we're talking about video in digital marketing, so many uses, uses, uses excuse me, uh, messaging, promotion on social media, meaning stories, reels, shorts, explaining your business or introductions, demos, product introductions, how-to videos, training videos, and live streaming. So how important is it for the planning process when it comes to any sort of videos or video marketing? It, it makes a big difference. And, and I'm being very transparent, Marissa. This is something I still am not as good at as I would like to be, but I'm I'm getting there. I absolutely notice the difference between when I plan content and I do not plan content. And I, I am a fan of planning your content overall, video just being a part of that content. Uh, but it makes a big difference in planning your emails, planning 
texts, if you use mobile marketing, if you use text marketing, planning blogs, wh whatever content you're sharing, video, uh, perhaps even more so because there, there are so many different things you can do with video there. there it, it really allows you to be creative or if you're not the creative person, the creative person or the creative uh, part of your team, uh, there's a lot of opportunity to be creative. And so I really like to plan content out, plan videos out for a pretty good amount of time because that way it's done. And all, all you need to do is release it. Uh, or schedule it, you know, if we're talking about social media. And so it, it is great to plan out your content. And this is something I help clients in doing. You can plan videos out for a week or you can plan them out for the next quarter. I mean, it, it really just depends on where you are in your business. I, I find in most cases, the longer you plan it out, the better. Because again, it allows you to automate that more and, and you can still make changes. You know, I, I've gotten I've gotten people who say, well, what about, it, you know, really staying in the moment and your content reflecting current events? That's fine. I mean, you you can always go in and, and tweak some things if need be. And also you can anticipate certain things. You know, if you're planning for the third quarter, for example, now, well, you know, certain things happen in the third quarter. I mean, we're, we're getting into, you know, the fall, late, late summer. And so there are certain things that happen then, whether it's with your business in particular, whether it's just kind of in general, you know, back to school happens in, in the third quarter. And so if that fits in with your brand or with your products and services, then you certainly want to um, utilize that. Even if it doesn't, I mean, if you're in, uh, if you're a realtor, if you're in real estate, you could still leverage back to school. I mean, it, it again, it's just a matter of you being creative. And so I, I think that makes a really big difference uh, in terms of your video, because you can really kind of brainstorm and think about, give some thought to what you want to share in these videos. What is your call to action? The audience, and, and this is provided that you already know your audience, which I'm really big on. I, I think the, what I call the uh, power trifecta of brand and marketing is so important. That's positioning, targeting, and messaging. So hopefully you know who your target market is, who your ideal client, your dream client is. If you don't, I really encourage you to work on that. And that's something uh, we can help you with as well. But provided you know that, you can really think about what you want to say to that audience, what, what they're going to resonate with, what they like, what they want to see in a video. And then you can determine what kind of videos you want to share. And it, it can be a good thing to use different types of video. Um, you know, if you're not really big on being in front of the camera, then perhaps you look at other ways to show up in video for your product or service to show up for you to share tips and strategies for you to use a tool like StreamYard um, to share presentations or what have you. There's all kinds of things you can do in video, but planning it does make a difference. You just said something and I, it kind of made me think we could play a fun game. Oh, so you, okay. you're talking about live video and you mentioned realtors. Okay. Uh, planning in the fall. And it right away made me think of a realtor friend. Her name is Dawn McElastic and she's in Connecticut. I think her married name is Dawn Gagliardi now, but she does these incredible Hello videos. Dawn, in case you're watching. <laughs> right. Hi Dawn. I'll make sure to share this link with her. She does really fun videos of her singing and she came oh, up with I a love great it. little, yeah, she came up with a great uh, video where she's singing to new kids on the block as the as the the kind of tune but she's changing the words to why she should be your realtor right so it's like step one 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 we can have wow. lots of fun. step two 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 i'll find a house for you right so totally <laughs> fun it. totally fun and cheesy so that just led me to think of her when you said the realtor thing and then it also led me to think about the fact that instead of just doing postings where she takes photos 
of mm -hmm. the properties she's selling, she actually does really great video walkthroughs and she puts them on social media. So here's the game. We're going to play a 30 second game. Okay. I'm going to name um, some type of career, right? Um, like for instance, realtor. And I want you on the fly to just come up with an idea for a video that they could do that might relate to their business. Hmm. Okay. You can do it. So like for instance, realtor. Okay. Uh, they can make videos. Oh, touring their home, the homes, right. Instead of just mm -hmm. photo. So I'll just name a profession. Take, we'll try to go fast. We'll do like light. Okay. Speed. Oh yeah. 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I'll try okay. All right. So we did realtor. How about a baker? What kind of video can a baker do? Where can they put the video? Oh, wow. There, a baker should definitely put video on Instagram, Facebook. They could do TikTok. They could do a TikTok of them preparing or baking the cake, like in the beginning, the ingredients. And then they could do, and I'm really thinking TikTok because those are quick videos of yeah. showing like, cutting into a really moist, delicious Ooh. cake or yes. cheesecake. I mean, yes. that will really get people's attention because people My love mouth is watering. Okay. Exactly. I love, I love it. Okay. <laughs> so TikTok, like a, like a how to video almost of them making something and then the result at the end mouth. Okay. Love yes. it. Okay. Let me think of another, another profession. How about, how about it? Like a, director of a school, if their goal, it's a private school for, you know, preschool kids. And their goal is to get the word out about their school and try to get more parents to enroll their kids. What kind of video hmm. do you think that they could create and, and where would they put that video? I would say for something like that, they could do a video of a classroom and mm -hmm. of the students, a, a good day of the students enjoying enjoying being in the classroom, enjoying learning, or perhaps even um, at an event that they have for the students mm. that the, the students are really enjoying. And for parents, you're looking to reach parents more so. Uh, I would say Facebook is mm -hmm. is a good place. Also, Instagram. Here on LinkedIn, because, uh, you know, there's a lot of obviously professionals here and a lot of professionals and business owners and, and marketers are parents. And so don't forget about LinkedIn. I love it. OK, one more. These are great examples. And, and this is showing those of you watching right now, listening. It doesn't matter what business you're in video is an incredible way to oh, yeah. not only get out your message, but if you pick the right place to put that video and choose the right style of that video, you are going to hit your target demographics. So, okay, maybe one more, maybe two, because I'm having fun with this game. Um, how about, how about a business coach? Okay. So someone who coaches people in marketing or like, yeah. How about like a business coach or like a image coach, someone who helps entrepreneurs? I, I would say with either and either of those examples, I'm really big on testimonials. I'm really big on mm. uh, client feedback. And so you could do an interview with a client and it doesn't even have to be a long interview, although there is a place for longer interviews as well. I did that with one of my clients, I have a therapist client I worked with on her, she did my signature brand breakthrough experience. And the interview was about 22, 23 minutes. Uh, we took that video and broke it up into smaller videos, about seven micro videos that were anywhere between about a minute and four minutes. And it was just great because she was talking about kind of the before and after where she was before she came to me, where she was after the experience she had. That is really powerful when you are really any kind of coach because your prospects want to know what results you've gotten. They want to hear from your clients. And it's great to get written testimonials as well, but it's even more powerful when you mm. can get them on video raving about you and talking about the great experience they had with you.
And oh. one more that comes to mind, one, something else yeah. that popped in my mind, you could do a video and this could be something that, that's quick where I'm seeing a box. You, you get a box and either you step into the box, you make a video of you just like putting your foot in the box, putting your arm or elbow in the box. I know this sounds kind of funny, but look kind of awkward. And you could have the message though, we are all about that or say something like this doesn't look good or this looks awkward because we're all about being outside of the box. Oh, I like that. So being creative, having fun with words and messaging and images and analogies and, and just, just be yourself, I think also is such a key for any video. Like you said, you find yeah. humor in yourself. So when you reach out, to further your connections or try to nail down that speaking engagement, you use humor as a way to mm -hmm. connect with people. So I think that's important. Well, that was a fun game. First game I've ever played on our live stream. So thank you for participating oh, in such a good sport. You've got me thinking video and you've got me in creative mode. So let's dive in. Thank you so much for sharing all your insights today on video. I'm going to have you cool. join me as I share our Engage Digital Marketing News of the Week, if that's cool with you, because this week's News of the Week has all to do with, let me find my link here, with our topic of video. So today's Digital Marketing News of the Week is all about video. So to, and I'm going to share some of the same statistics I shared at the start of our show. So Basically, right now, digital marketing, the growing trend and the fastest growing trend is using live streaming video in your mm -hmm. marketing. So to illustrate that fact, I shared this stat earlier, but I'll share it again. LinkedIn Live has grown in popularity by 158% in just the first three quarters of 2020. And LinkedIn has also noted that engagement on live videos is exponentially higher than posts with pre-recorded videos. In fact, as I mentioned earlier, live videos have an average of seven times more reactions and 25 times more comments, 24 times more comments. And surprisingly, this is very interesting, Rachel. Michael Stelzner, who is a host of a live streaming, very popular social media podcast, noted that only a mere 3% of marketers are currently using the live stream function on mm -hmm. LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So it's grown 158%, only 3% of marketers are using it. Uh, so we believe, and I think it's clear from our talk today, that if you're not live streaming and using this, this tool, this video tool to move the needle in 2021, you're really missing out and you're going to fall behind and your competitors are going to outshine you. So yeah. of course I want to share that engage live is a new program that we have just launched this uh, in May. And so if live streaming is something that you're watching right now and you're thinking you should be doing, hit us up, go to engagelive.com or email me and I'll share my email and I'd love to give you more information on that program. What do you think about this digital marketing news of the week? I mean, it's live stream or bust, right? Yeah. Well, Marissa, those numbers for LinkedIn Live really reflects video stats overall and, and over the past year or so. A benchmark report from uh, Benyard showed that video in general increased like 135% 2020 over 2019. And wow. so 2020 was huge for video. And it, it's that's not surprising to me because more and more people are starting to get, get the message, you know, that video is not going anywhere and it's beneficial. I, I would really like to see those numbers grow. Obviously there's a lot of room for growth. Uh, with live video on LinkedIn in particular. And it's interesting because I, I am really glad to hear your your friend, your associate, Don, the realtor, is using video because real estate is at the bottom of industries that use video. And I find that surprising because it's like real estate is one of those industries that lends itself to video. I mean, whether it's residential, it's commercial, 
why are you not using video to show your properties, to show your happy clients? I, I mean, I, I, I don't completely understand it. If you're in, if you're in real estate out there, get on it. <laughs> with Get video. On it. You know what? If you're in baking, if you're in real estate, if you're in e-commerce, if you're a coach, a consultant, if you have a tech business and you're trying to get the word out and you want to sponsor your own live stream like Engage does, now is the time because it's moving so fast. The needle is literally going like this. We're like a rocket ship off to space. And if you're not on board, you're going to be left on earth with your ham sandwich going, what happened? Right? Like <laughs> I was sandwich. doing so good. What happened? Gosh, Rachel, this was yeah. such a lovely talk. I'm so excited you could share your time and insights with us. Now we'd like to share your contact information with the audience, if that's okay with you. Sure. And let them know where they can contact and connect with you after today's show. So if you want to connect with Rachel, Maybe you're interested in knowing more about how video can help, or maybe you're in the Houston area and you'd like to know more about SWAG, which stands for what again, Rachel? Strategic Women Achieve Growth. Boom. If you'd like to know more about that, here is her LinkedIn. And I always advise you, leave her a note, a message, maybe a video message, letting her know where you yes. saw her show mention engage. And of course, she'll be way more quick to respond and to connect with you. If you let her know that you saw her here or in a replay of this show, which will be available in podcast and webinar form starting tomorrow. And then if you'd like to know more about swag strategy solutions, screenshot this, we'll put up her website. So it's going to be www.swagstrategy.com. What can everybody expect to find there on your website? Well, you'll find more about what Swag Strategy Solutions offers. Um, again, at, at the core of the business and what we do is really help our clients develop breakthrough brands. And as you mentioned in, in the intro, that, that is really about breaking through to more clarity. Clarity, I can't say enough about just being clear about your brand and your brand message. So break through the more clarity, more credibility, more visibility, and that tends to lead to more profitability. Awesome. Thank you so much again for your time, Rachel. This is all the time we have today. So I'm going to bid you adieu. We did an earlier show. We are playing around with times for our shows. And we thought we'd try before lunch. And as you see, in the month of June, our shows will be a little bit earlier than they have been in the past. So make sure if you're watching us right now, especially if you tuned in and you missed most of the show, don't worry, we'll get you the replay tomorrow. But make sure to go to our uh, Facebook page. I don't know why I was going to say that. Our LinkedIn page <laughs> and follow us on LinkedIn. There we go. Um, that way you can be in the know and know when our next scheduled show will be. Now, if you're tuning in and you have topic suggestions or you'd like more information about Engage, you can email me at marissa.m at engage.com or find me on LinkedIn at LinkedIn backslash host Marissa Morgan. And also, if you're watching the show and want to connect after the show, leave me a note and let me know that you saw our show. Again, Rachel, thank you so, so much. Oh, thank you. Oh, so wonderful. And be sure to tune in next Tuesday, June 15th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, a little bit later. Lisa Lieberman Wang will be here and she'll be sharing how to stand out from the crowd and become a truly elite marketer in 2021. She'll be giving a talk on her most recent book. Last but not least, actually, before we go, Miss Rachel, would you want to pop up your book one more time just so everyone can see it and let them know where they can find that book? Sure. This is my book, Brand Sell Profit, Brand Sell Profit. And it's all about kind of connecting the dots between creating an unforgettable brand and a stronger bottom line. And you can find this on Amazon. You can also find it um, on my wealth website, specifically at swagstrategy.com forward slash BSP, as in Brand Sell Profit book. BSP book. And very quickly, Marissa, I also remembered yeah. on the website, um, there is a freebie. So you can certainly take advantage of that, of the brand to profit bundle. Uh, that's absolutely free. It is an awesome resource. And that includes video. There is a video tutorial included in that. 
Um, okay. But you can find that on the website as well. Awesome. Awesome. I've got that up there. Screenshot that swagstrategy.com. All right, everybody, on behalf of myself and the entire team at Engage, I want to thank you for watching our show. Make sure you connect with Rachel Wilson Thibodeau after this broadcast, and be sure to share the link with friends and colleagues and share with everybody who you care about why video is a must-have tool for 2021 and beyond. And we'll see you here next Tuesday for our next episode of Digital Marketing Intelligence, Ask the Experts. Have a great weekend, everyone.